create lush environments with ease using Unreal's powerful foliage tools. This video is part of our Unreal Engine full course. Subscribe and check the playlist for more tutorials. In this lesson, I will discuss tools we can access when working in foliage mode. At first, you might think that foliage is just a collection of tools for scattering vegetation in the scene. But most importantly, you can scatter anything using foliage tools. Let's explore some of them. Press Ctrl plus Shift plus S to save all my changes and the current level as a new version. Since we are making significant changes, having multiple versions of our project is good. If you are ready, I will discuss the foliage section more. This will help us spread out and scatter trees, plants, and any objects you want to scatter. You can use the foliage tool right now. As you can see, we don't have any foliage in our drop foliage here. Let's bring some trees and plants here to start building our project. I downloaded this content, which is called Trees European Beach, from Epic Games Marketplace. The supported engine version is 5.3, and it will be fine since we will use it in a project that is made with a higher version. I already downloaded it so that I can add it to the project. Again, when adding it to the project, I must hit Show All and select my project. Also, you have to select the closest engine version to 5.4, which is 5.3. It may take a little time because it's an 8GB file, but it went quickly since I already have it on my computer. Let's return to our project. If I go to my content folder now, I see another folder called European Beach. Foliage, geometry, maps, materials, and textures are inside the folders. Let's go to maps and open this map. Here is a template of what is available inside this package. Simple Wind is on the right side and Pivot Painter Wind is on the left. Some prefer Pivot Painter Wind because it is much more realistic but is not performance friendly. You see all the trees available in this package. Also, you see this small asset called Global Foliage Actor, a control they built to allow you to access many exciting features. I'm going to demonstrate. When it's selected in the detail panel, I can change some of the settings. For example, I can increase wind strength. As you can see, the left side is much more realistic than the right side. However, Pivot Painter Wind is computationally demanding, so be careful. I recommend using Simple Wind instead of Pivot Painter, but if you have a good computer and want to see a more realistic wind, go for Pivot Painter. You also have other controls here. For example, you can change the wind speed. Another exciting part is that you can change the season settings you can make it more yellowish and autumn-like. With season settings, you can get exciting results. So you have all these items available to you. The most important are wind strength, wind speed, season strength, and season saturation. This demo shows what's available. Now we can head back to the level we were working on. Inside the European Beach folder, you see other folders like materials and textures, which contain all the materials and textures for these trees. You also see a geometry folder, for example, if I go to the simple wind folder inside the geometry folder and open one of the static meshes, I see the static mesh of a tree that we can scatter in the scene. Just note that Nanite is activated for this static mesh, so we are getting advantages of Nanite technology here. There is another folder called Foliage. If I open it, I see some settings that control how I want to spread the geometry around the scene. There is a corresponding Foliage file for each static mesh in the geometry folder. Whenever we want to scatter a specific mesh in the scene using foliage tools, we must first create a foliage actor. The foliage actor contains information about the static mesh and its distribution in the scene, such as the number of instances of that static mesh we are placing. When scattering anything using the foliage tool, we first need to create a foliage actor for it. Let me explain with an example. When I want to use foliage, I can go to the foliage mode, which is currently empty. I can add foliage by clicking here. Unreal Engine will automatically recognize all foliage actors that I have in my content folder and display them so that I can add and start scattering. But let's look at how we can make foliage actor out of a static mesh. For example, if I go to my geometry folder and pick one of the static meshes for the trees, I can simply drag it to the foliage section of my foliage tools. After releasing it here, it will automatically create a foliage actor and ask where you want to place it. But we don't need it in our case, since when we imported our tree pack, it came with a folder with all the foliage actors we needed to scatter the trees around the scene. For this project, I will select all the foliage actors in the tree pack and drag them to the foliage section. Now that I have all of them here, 
I can start spreading them around the scene. However, let's move to a corner of our scene first. Before spreading them out, I will examine the options available to us. For demonstration purposes, I will hide the rocks at this point. I'll come to this corner to explore the foliage. If I want to scatter these trees, I must select them by clicking and activating them in the top corner. I can also select multiple items and spread them. Let's examine just spreading one of them in the scene. From the top window, you see that we are in paint mode. I have activated one item. I will see a brush when I come to the scene. If I click and drag, you will see many trees in the scene. I can use the erase option to remove what I have added. As you can see, I can increase the brush size here to paint over a larger area. I can also delete them, if you prefer. Currently, the objects are very dense, so that I will reduce the intensity. When I attempt to paint, there are fewer items in the scene. Using the intensity control, you can change the number of trees placed in the scene with each click. When you place them in the scene, there are many other options. For example, in select mode, you can select them individually to delete, move, or scale them. You can also select all of them together with the select all option. Another tool is the lasso tool, which allows you to select multiple items simultaneously and move them around in select mode. Instead of using the brush, you can use the single placement option to place items individually, which is very useful. Please note that if you have more than one item selected to be scattered in the scene, with every click in a single placement option, you place all at once in one place, which doesn't seem optimal in most cases, so there is an option that you can activate here. Change all selected to cycle through selection in single instance mode. In this case, it will cycle through your selected foliage with each placement. You can also select all of them from the top option and then press delete, this will remove them. Let's focus on one of them for now. In paint mode, there are many other options. For example, you can see the geometry associated with the foliage and where it is located. You can also adjust the intensity here. Changing the intensity here allows you to control the intensity for individual items instead of all the selected items. If I increase this to 1000, it will be much denser. However, I usually use the options above the top in the brush setting. Another good feature is the scale option, where you can set minimum and maximum values for the scale. This will make the trees appear in different sizes. As we move down, an option is align to normal. If I want to place some trees, they will align with the curvature of the landscape. This is not realistic for trees, but might be suitable for grass. I can uncheck this so that the trees are placed upright. You may notice that sometimes you can't place trees on steep slopes. The ground slope angle setting controls this. By increasing it to nearly 80 degrees, I can set trees on steeper slopes. Another important setting is the Z offset. To demonstrate, I'll set it to negative 300 and positive 300. This will place the bottoms of the trees at different heights, which can be helpful in some cases. Let's reset the changes that we made here. Now instead of one, I'm going to select multiple items. Now I can make the changes I want over all selected items. Now that we understand how this works, I will begin with the larger trees and then move on to the smaller ones. Here, we will apply the same principle discussed for the large, medium, and tiny details. Before adding these to the scene, it's a good idea to adjust your settings first and then add the trees. The first row of trees is the largest, and as we go down, they get smaller. These are even smaller trees and bushes. First, I'm going to make some adjustments for all of them. We don't want to align to expect it to be activated since all of these items are trees and trees usually go up regardless of the surface that is planned on, so we can adjust that. Also, we want to place them on the steepest slopes, so I'm setting the angle to 80 degrees instead of 25. Let's see how big the trees in the first row are. If I place one, it's so large that it's useless for my scene. I'm setting the minimum and maximum scales to 0.3 and 0.5 for the first row to make them more manageable. The smaller trees are a good size. And the smallest ones will be fillers for the scene, so they also seem fine. I will start with the largest and work down to the smallest ones. 
I'm going to paint trees to cover my scene. It seems reasonable for the first time. But I want to reduce the intensity of adding trees from other sets. I can adjust the brush intensity and size and add more trees, especially behind the main focus area. After the first row, I'll select the smaller trees and add them to the scene. I'm increasing the intensity, especially for the areas behind. It's getting much better. I can increase the density and place some trees. Then come to select mode or lasso mode to delete the ones I don't need. In select mode, I can see and control the placement of the trees. Let's hit Ctrl plus Shift plus S to save the map. Let's review the sample map we examined when importing our tree pack. We select the global foliage actor from this level, copy it with Ctrl plus C, return to our working level and bring it back here with the Ctrl plus V option. Let's place the global foliage actor somewhere back there. When selected, I can adjust the wind speed in the detail section. The movement is unrealistic since we use a simple wind over pivot painter so I will decrease it. When the foliage actor is selected, I can change the season and make it a little yellow. Remember, it's better to look at it in unlit mode to adjust the color. Now, we have the first round of foliage. However, I'm thinking about adding more foliage to the scene. I'm going to head to Quixel Bridge again. This time, I'm going to select something from the plant section. I've already decided on a few of them and put the link in the description. You don't just need to use plants, you can also scatter rocks using the foliage tool. So let's add this asset, a collection of small rocks, to the scene. These are three items that I want to use. As you can see right now, we don't have nanite quality plants, so the high quality would be sufficient. Just download it and add it to the project. Let's also add the other one that I downloaded. We have these items and we export them to the scene. When I checked the Megascan asset library, I noticed another folder named 3D Plants, which contains the 3D plants inside the engine. Opening the static mesh, I observed that the 3D plants utilize the level of detail LODs system. However, it is slightly different because it includes multiple quality levels and the final one is simply a surface with a material on top of it known as a billboard. Billboards used to be very useful, especially if you wanted to use them for a game. You should know that we can activate Nanite for these assets right now. Let's activate Nanite for the rest of them as well. After activating Nanite, the LOD system will no longer be used. Like any other object, they have a material and you control them. Nanite has another material just for billboards. Now it's time to add the foliage. Unreal Engine recognized that they were here and added them automatically for us. I'm going to deselect everything and paint my first round. I won't make any changes. I'll start adding this foliage. I'm going to play with the intensity and add it. I can also change the direction of the light to see better. I'll draw the foliage where necessary. I can add foliage to any area visible to the camera, including some inside objects, since they can grow there. I can adjust the intensity to put more foliage in specific areas. You can also change the brush size to draw over areas with deeper slopes. I can pick some grass and add them. I choose areas for smaller grass to scatter around. I can adjust and increase the size. 
adding more grass to cover some areas. I think we are in good shape. Now that we've finished this, it's time to adjust the color. If I go to unlit mode, you'll see that the latest foliages are too bright. I can find materials and use the color overlay to match them with the rest of the scene. The same goes for the grass. I use the color overlay to make it blend in. Lastly, I want to scatter the stones we brought to our project. If I go to the foliage section, I can drag and drop static meshes for stones. Each time I click, it generates another set of static mesh foliage and we have to save it somewhere in our content folder. In our case, we can save it in the same folder as static meshes. Now, I can select and paint them like any other foliage actor. Essentially, you can use the foliage tool to scatter any static mesh. Lastly, I'll adjust the color of the new stones. We have finished here, and I believe we understand foliage tools well. In the next lesson, I'll discuss decals and how we can use them to add even more detail to our scenes.